Radio. You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. And good morning, good afternoon, whatever the case may be. You are here live with Dr. Jeff Werber, your host for the next 30 minutes here on Pet Life Radio's live call in show, Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. The keywords being call in and live. So I want to hear from you. I'll give you a couple of ways to do it. You can either call us toll free, 877 385 8882. Once again, 877 385 8882. Even more fun is you can join us live on Google Hangouts. So if you go to um, petliferadio.com, and scroll down to the Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff tab and follow through. You'll see a an address for a Google Hangouts. All you have to do is click on it and sit in front of your computer or your phone and your Android or your cell, your iPhone, whatever. And with your pet or pets would be even more fun. And uh, you can join us live and we can talk about anything you want to talk about. Questions about your pets talked about. What we're going to be talking about today, I got some, some news items that would be interested to hear from you about. And then um, in the last part of the show, I want to talk about the dreaded referral. And I find there seems to be a disconnect between the your veterinarian's reasons for referring and at which point do they refer and what you as a pet parent expect from your veterinarian. And I know this for a fact because I often get calls randomly from people or appointments made from clients I should say from pet parents that aren't my clients, and they want a second opinion. And mind you, they're going from one general practitioner to another, and that always raises a red flag for me. So um, we'll talk about that. Anyway, uh, we're here. Thanks to our sponsors, Save This Life Microchip and Brevecto, which is Merck's fantastic flea and tick product. It is effective for 12 weeks, count it, three months. That's great. Three times more than most of its competition out there in a tasty, chewable treat. And of course, Kong's Veterinary Products and More Than a Cone event, which is raising awareness of animal welfare through the arts. And it's not just the cone. Kong Veterinary Products, KVP, puts out a lot of great products uh, for your pets as well. So I want to thank them for uh, allowing us to be here with you. Last week, I actually started, I actually, I, I started last Monday morning in San Diego. I was doing a, it was kind of a tongue-in-cheek, if you will, segment on Valentine's Day for pets. And, uh, you know, having just... It's funny, having come from Nashville when I was at the Mars main offices and I was being primed on some new products, I'll be working with them for the IMS Oral Cat Care Formula, which is amazing. And also the new Neutro relaunch. Uh, Neutro is coming out with phenomenal foods. Many of them will see the needs of those of you that want to you know, believe in grain-free and um, natural ingredients, non-GMO, all that's really cool stuff. So uh, anyway, Nutra is putting them out. But <laughs> even though you're in Mars Pet Food, the, everywhere you turn, there are these big containers and boxes full of M&Ms and uh, regular and peanuts and uh, Snickers, my favorite, and Three Musketeers, and you name it, you know, Milky Way, any Mars brand is there. And it's fantastic. And speaking just to whet your whistle a little bit, we heard that there is a new M&Ms can be coming out. And it's the center. It's not going to be a peanut covered in chocolate, covered in the coating. It's going to be caramel and covered then in chocolate. And then around that, the coating. And I hear from those fortunate enough to have had the opportunity to taste, test this new candy. They say it's amazing. So um, I'm kind of looking forward to that as well. But let's go back to Valentine's Day. So, because, you know, the point was, and, and, you know, everyone's giving everything to whatever, gifts and whatever people like. And let's face it, dogs are not allowed to eat chocolate, so that's out. I don't think they give a darn about flowers, so uh, that's out too. So when you have your pet and you wanted to give something, I, I assume you love your pets, right? Valentine's Day, you're giving things to people you love. Let's give something to our pet. So I found, I discovered, not really new, it's been around, but it is very impressive and it is called smartphones. And with smartphones, they are, they, if to look at them, they look like some rawhide shoes you'd see from other companies on the market, but they're not rawhide at all. It's all made out of vegetable base and chicken. And then sometimes they have like a, a lining, a filler on the inside, which could come from other meats, but it's all natural meats. It's one 
100% edible, 100% digestible. So the, no sharp edges, nothing that when it gets too soft, like real rawhide, that you have to worry about your pet swallowing a big chunk at once. So it's really, really great product. So I was invited down to uh, what they call the CW6, which is the obviously the CW network down in San Diego. And um, we did a, a morning segment with them on Valentine's Day and, and what you can give your pets that is safe, that they will love, that is certainly, I mean, super tasty. And you have the peace of mind that they're getting to chew on something, that natural inclination they have to chew, that necessary inclination to chew because it's good for their teeth development. It's good for their gums. It's good to help minimize plaque and tartar. I mean, obviously it's not going to replace brushing. It's not going to replace cleaning, but it's really, really good and totally safe. And I found out also what I, li- what I liked about was it just basically impressed with this product is that on taste tests, they took the number one rawhide selling product out there. I'm not going to mention the name though. I know what it is. And they, on taste tests, they beat them 10 to 1. So look for it out there called Smart Bones or Dream Bones. Same company, very impressive stuff. And I tell you, I now give them to my dogs and they love me even more. How cool is that? So anyway, as you know, I like to go through the American Veterinary Medical Association puts out something called Smart Brief for veterinarians. And it's just all sorts of research going around town, stories, animal stories, cute stuff. They had this great video that I found about Mia. Mia, you got you got to find this one. If you go to the Westminster Dog Show and you click on whatever they, they have, and they also have like an agility competition. So they show this one dog. And you know, like these dogs are like robots. They're like Stepford Wives. They, they are like the perfect dog, certainly not like any of mine. And and they listen to their trainer or their handler, and they're watching for the signals and the hand signals, and they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. I mean, you know, it's, it's like they're not real. Well, <laughs> Mia is a little beagle who is comically very real. And here she is in the middle of going through these obstacle courses. She is looking at the crowd, and she's turning around, and she stops listening to the handler. It's hysterical. And um, she, she didn't do very well in the competition, but I think she won the hearts of everybody who watched this video. So, so you got to see it. Just as I said, you can do your little Google search for Westminster Dog Show, The Agility, and a little beagle named Mia, M-I-A. Uh, she was MIA, quite frankly, uh, but it was really, really cute. So um, anyway, so some of the things on Smart Brief, there is a pet food company out there. It's called, and again, I'm not ragging on anybody. I'm just sharing information and, and there has been no problems, but this was a voluntary recall. And this is, a, it's called Against the Grain, clearly another grain-free food, which is a big thing. I don't want to get into the discussion now of dogs and grain-free. I think some of us tend to anthropomorphize more than we should when it comes to things like this. But anyway, there was potential contamination with, this is unbelievable, pentobarbital. Now, that's not something that accidentally gets in in a big vat of food that's being made. I mean, pentobarbital, that's something, that's a downer that's used to sometimes even anesthetize or or in very high concentrations can even kill a dog or a cat. And, And how the heck, I didn't want to ask him, nor did the article go into it, but I thought that was really interesting. Unless somebody was threatened them and tried to do this because they're getting back. I mean, there's obviously there's a backstory here. I don't know what it is. But anyway, to be safe, they uh, did a voluntary recall on those foods that were thought to contain pentobarbital. In the Bronx, those of you who are living in New York. Now, as you know, over the years, I've talked about what we call core vaccines. And even here in Los Angeles, unless you have a, a dog that, that you're doing a lot of hiking in the mountains, in the backwoods, I'm not worried about a disease called leptospirosis. Lepto is shedding the urine of affected animals, rodents. We see it, therefore, in higher concentrations in streams, in feces. So, you know, if you have a typical backyard dog here, like in LA, we're not worried about lepto. And by the way, there seems to be a lot of a higher percentage of vaccine-induced reactions from the lepto fraction. And therefore, many of us have chosen to elect out of lepto unless your dog's lifestyle is such that it would be a good idea. Well, having said that, Then, having mentioned, of course, that it can be shed in the urine and feces of rodents, maybe it wouldn't surprise you that Bronx, New York, has had three residents, we're talking city people, that have contracted leptospirosis. One has already died, two are very sick, and they believe that it's because of the rat population. 
pretty comforting, huh? So maybe if you're going to eat in a restaurant anywhere in the Bronx, or maybe anywhere in New York that could be rat infested, it might be a good idea to uh, think twice because lepto is uh, seemingly there in a city. And lepto is potentially deadly, clearly, because one person died already, and it really seems to affect the liver and the kidneys, so be careful out there. Speaking of Westminster, a German Shepherd dog named Rumor won Best in Show at Westminster. Uh, You know, German Shepherds have always been very popular dogs. They're always at the top, I think, five in the AKC list, but that's really cool that um, to win Westminster is is really something, and uh, apparently a stunning dog. And I was like, I mean, I I think, well, any dog that gets to that level, you know it's pretty good looking. Even the, the, the not-so-good-looking dogs are good-looking. So uh, it's, um, that's, that's really nice. Now, the question has been asked, and this has been researched at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, but we know that there are certain diseases, some very serious, some deadly, that affect, that are transmitted to us through fleas and ticks, ticks especially, and mosquitoes. And so you wonder, why is it that you have these deadly bacteria or viruses being harbored in these insects, these fleas and ticks, and mosquitoes in the case of heartworm disease, how is it that they're not getting killed? So obviously, they're very species-specific as far as the potential to cause disease, and they seemingly affect mammals more than the insects and the acarids. But so that what they're doing research is to finding out their, to immunocompromise the response, the immune response of these animals themselves, these insects themselves, like they're working on ticks right now, diseases like Lyme and, and, and Ehrlichia and Babesia. So How do they maybe get these ticks to die from the disease by affecting their immune system? So therefore, there'll be less ticks around to transmit those diseases to us. So they're kind of working on it. I think that's pretty interesting stuff. Now, this is a study that's out of the Neuroscience and Behavior Review. And I'm sure, I'm sure, in fact, I'd love to hear from you if you have such a dog, but how dogs will actually shun people. They do not like people exhibiting bad behavior. And if you have someone that is exhibiting bad behavior to you, all right, not being helpful, being obnoxious, whatever, your dog picks up on that and they will start to shun those people as well. And that's really fascinating that they can actually recognize. Now, whether they're recognizing it through your behaviors because of that person or something that's being put on like a pheromone or some sort of hormone, something that they are sensing in you or It's just they don't like the yelling or they don't like the obnoxious behavior. Or again, they're reading your reaction, but whatever, it seems like dogs are in your corner. Your dogs are protecting you. And if someone doesn't like you, guess what? They're not going to like that person. So I think that's pretty cool. And um, one more before we go on a break. And uh, this is really cool as well. You know, rabies is deadly. And rabies, we know, causes brain lesions. That means rabies itself, the virus itself, can get in across the blood-brain barrier. So notice that's how it hits our nervous system and brain. Well, there are certain drugs that are unable to get past that barrier to do their work. So these researchers, believe it or not, this is coming from South Korea, which I thought was kind of cool. They're anti-cancer weapon. They are taking some of these cancer, anti-cancer drugs, and they are coating them on the outside with nanoparticles coming from rabies, the virus, the proteins and rabies that is just the protein. So it's not the rabies virus. They've isolated the proteins from the virus, and they're using those proteins to coat the anti-cancer drugs. And uh, now these anti-cancer drugs are able, because of the protein and the coating, the rabies protein, which can cross the blood-brain barrier, it's sort of like you're piggybacking onto these rabies proteins to get these anti-cancer drugs across the blood-brain barrier in to where they need to work in the nervous system. So for maybe brain lesions, for spinal cord lesions, tumors, cancers, um, this is really great stuff. Anyway, don't go away. We'll be right back after these short words. You're here live with Dr. Jeff Werber, your host here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Best with Dr. Jeff. We'll be back after these short messages. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. As a dog, I know a lot about fleas and ticks, so trust me when I say no other tasty chew protects dogs as long as Brevecto. One Brevecto chew keeps fleas and ticks away for up to 12 weeks. Be a good human and ask your vet about Brevecto. Brevecto may cause vomiting. 
It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Hi, I'm Dana Humphrey, the founder of Whitegate PR. We have been specializing in PR and marketing in the pet industry for over 10 years. If you have a pet product or service you would like to promote, give us a call. We can help create awareness for your brand on TV, radio, magazines, newspapers, and blogs. Feel free to reach me directly at 619-414-9307 or learn more on our website at whitegatepr.com or follow us on Facebook. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. And welcome back. You're here live with Dr. Jeff Werber here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. And before the break, well, earlier, before at the opening of the show, we talked about one of the things I, I was, I, I am often surprised is when I would get a, a call and an appointment made for a, a new client referred by one of my clients typically, or sometimes they, they might find me on the web and they're here for a second opinion. And what disturbs me a little bit about not that, look, I love doing it. And oftentimes I, I will get a new client out of it, but what it tells me when a client is searching out a second opinion and especially searching out that second opinion from another general practitioner that there is a problem with their veterinarian or the relationship they have with their veterinarian. Because typically, let's face it, just to give you broad strokes that most of you, I'm sure, know this already, but you have a veterinarian. Your veterinarian typically is going to be, as I am, a GP, a general practitioner, sort of a a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. So, of course, many GPs, myself included, have some areas of, uh, I wouldn't say expertise, but areas of interest where we may know more than our colleague in that one arena, in that one area, that one discipline. You know, for me, I do a lot of cancer. I do a lot of eye work. I'm not as strong in, in, in for example, my neuro work as, as I some of the others. So I'm, you know, certainly adequate in all the disciplines, but I see a lot more of certain things, dermatology, for example. And so I do more of them. And of course, with anything, the more you do, the better you get. The more cases you see, the more you recognize things, but that's standard. But the most important thing to know as a general practitioner is what you don't know. Because I always say, it's, it, of course, you know what you know. It's never going to get you into trouble when you know what you know. It's more important to know what you don't know. That's the most important thing because that's what gets you into trouble. And the most dangerous person on the planet in any discipline, in any profession, is one who doesn't know what they don't know, i.e. they think they know it. So you think you know it, you're cruising along, you're doing the wrong thing at every step of the game. And who's it? I mean, obviously, you're hurting the pet. So those are some of the things that I, I worry about getting a call in. So that's where it's important to know what you don't know. So when someone's seeking out a second opinion, that kind of tells me that there was a disconnect somewhere between you and your veterinarian. And because what I know, because I know what I don't know, and I'm okay with it. I'm Look, I'm, I'm a GP. I'm totally okay. When I get to a point of hitting that brick wall from a diagnostic or a treatment standpoint, that's why there are specialists out there. And there's a specialist out there in almost every discipline you can imagine. Anything you think about going to a specialist for, for you, for a person, you got it for your pet. It's going to be internal medicine, you know, GI, cancer, ophthalmology, uh, dermatology, surgery, uh, you name it, they're out there. Acupuncture now. So I know that the only time I get upset with myself is if I'm sent something when I send it to one of my colleagues, all right? And he calls me up like after immediately after seeing the case, gives me what he found. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, you idiot, Werber, you should have found that. that that's not specialty, right? Fortunately, that doesn't ha- happen very often. And uh, you know, I always tell my the referring doctors I send to, trust me, if I screwed up, you need to let me know about it. 
And typically, I'm much more with me. It's usually the kind of thing where I send it to my, my favorite intern is here in town. And he knows if he's got a case coming from me, he's going to scratch his head because it's going to be a tough one for him to figure out. And that's usually the case. I, I, look, it, it doesn't make me feel good in the sense that, oh, my God, now we have a really tough case. And now I'm very, it's very serious for the pet. But it makes me feel good to know that, that I did my job as a GP. I, I hit pretty much everything that I, I know I should have. And now I'm leaving it up to the expertise of that specialist to take that, take it to the next level. But when someone comes in from me to me as a GP and they were referred by someone else, not from, of course, not from another doctor, then that tells me that that doctor doesn't understand the basics of being okay with one's limitations. We're not expected as general practitioners to know everything about everything. So it's okay to say to that client, after you're not being able to get the diagnosis, it's tough. Everything's coming back normal, and yet the pet is still not ADR, not doing right, ain't doing right. Or you're on the treatment track, you have a diagnosis, but the treatments aren't working. And so you, that doesn't work, so you try another one. And that doesn't work, you try another one. At some point, you got to stop and say, hey, this is not working out for us, for the pet. So therefore, I'm going to refer you to blankety blank whether it's going to be the internist or the dermatologist or the ophthalmologist or whatever the case, the surgeon, whatever the case may be, to know when you come up with something that is sort of more of a challenge for you as a GP, then it's time to refer. So from you out there, my friends out there, listeners that, that have pets, don't be afraid to ask your veterinarian after like that third or fourth time. One thing that I always, when I lecture to vets, even though you're on the right track, even though there's a system with which you are following to rule out the, as, as you know, my favorite expression, the horses versus the zebras, you're ruling out the horses and now you're, you're entering that realm of zebras. But you can read in your client's eyes. You can judge from the questions that they're getting frustrated. Refer it. Even though you're, you're given two more weeks, you're probably going to get the answer. And you know what? It's not worth the two weeks because what's going to happen is they're going to, on their own, right? You, the client's going to go call a friend and say, you know, I'm having a tough time. I just don't like what my doctor's doing. Who's your veterinarian? Oh, I go to so-and-so. You know what? I'm going I'm to call over there and see. So once a client, once you on your own, go seek out the advice, the second opinion from another doctor, especially if it's a generalist, then there's a good chance you will not be going back to your doctor. And that's where the disconnect starts because obviously you were dissatisfied and dissatisfied Because you don't really understand the mechanics of what needs to happen when you're trying to diagnose, especially a tough case. So you're getting frustrated. There's poor communication where the the doctor's telling you, this is very frustrating. Rome wasn't built in a day. We can't do, I'm not going to run every single test in the book, half of them unnecessary, just so I can get you the answer tomorrow. But we have a system. The next most logical possibility is this. So we're going to test for this. And if that comes back negative, then we're going to go for this and test for that. And But we will get to the answer. Or they're going to say, boy, I've done all the tests now, still don't have an answer. I'm going to refer you to Dr. So-and-so. He's a specialist in this area. And let's get you an answer. So you as, as pet parents, as clients, as pet owners, whatever you want to call yourself, that understand that there sometimes these cases are challenging. There's a system that one needs to go through to come up with a diagnosis. But talk to your veterinarians. And if you're getting a little frustrated, ask, you know, is there a specialist in this area that we can maybe, so I can get a second opinion. Just, I feel like I'm, I'm, we're going nowhere here and it's costing me a fortune with all these tests. You know, maybe a specialist could hone it in just on using some of the answers that you've already gotten, maybe from the history and say, you know what, I'll bet you that this is whatever. Because remember, these specialists have much more experience with just that organ system or in that discipline, whether it's, as I said, whether it's internal medicine, whether it's germ, whether it's surgery, whether it's ophthalmology, whether it's dentistry, whatever. And I find that even though sometimes I didn't really need to, I was, I had it handled, but I can tell from the client when I send them and they get the same answer from the specialist that I was giving them, guess what? They're not going anywhere else. So a lot of times I know what where we we're heading. I know the answer. They just don't want to hear it from me. And I always tell people, and I always, you know, you know, advise other veterinarians. And now you as pet owners should have the same feeling that when that when you have established that the competency of your GP through the specialist, it's only going to help you. So swallow your pride is what I tell doctors. Swallow the ego. And just when you think that the time is right, don't be afraid to refer. Referring to a specialist will never get you into trouble. But not referring to a specialist is going to get you in a heap of trouble. 
And so for you listeners out there as pet owners, know that. Don't be afraid to ask. If you're getting frustrated, seek out the help of preferably a specialist in that area. If your veterinarian does not want to cooperate, does not want to willfully give you that information, telling you, no, 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 we got it. There's no reason to go anyplace else. That's not good. That's not good. When a client wants it, gladly give it to them, and it's only going to help in the long run. Anyway, thanks for joining us here. I uh, love uh, when I get to be on my soapbox. If you have any questions or concerns about your pets, a special case, please reach me at drjeff, drjeff at petliferadio.com. You can also catch me here every Sunday at 9 a.m. in the West, at noon in the East, and wherever you are in between. And I want to thank our sponsors, Brevecto from Merck, Save This Life Microchip, and more than a cone, Kong Veterinary Products. And uh, just remember out there, if you want to try something new, um, non-solicited, this is just a uh, something I really like. My dogs love it. Look up smartbones.com uh, and um, or dreambones, and they are really fantastic. I guarantee your dogs are going to love them. And have a great week, everybody, and we'll be here next week. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.